So I was setting up a new NetFlow sensor in PRTG to receive flow data from my Palo Alto firewall. And I noticed that they've got these metrics down here for total volume, total speed. And they were nowhere near what I was seeing in the sessions on the Palo Alto itself. So I wanted to figure out where along the line things were getting lost. If uh, maybe the Palo Alto wasn't exporting all of those flows or if PRTG wasn't properly receiving them or what was going on. Um, so I did a packet capture with Wireshark on the PRTG probe and I saw that it looks like all of the flows are arriving correctly. So next I was looking at the differences in the flows that were arriving there to see um, if there's a certain type that maybe PRTG didn't like and wasn't recording or what you know some kind of similarity was. And my current suspicion is that long running sessions um, that, that haven't ended, uh, that are still persisting in the Palo Alto, aren't actually logged in PRTG. Only the sessions that are closed out and over and out of the session table are. Um, so this, the specification for NetFlow has this interesting field here uh, called firewall event with six possible uh, types or values rather. And so the sessions that are uh, running past what they call the active timeout for NetFlow uh, will we'll come through with a flow update uh, set in the packet and I'll show you that here in just a second. But the ones, the sessions that are over and done with will come through as uh, flow deleted. Uh, so my suspicion, like I said, is that the ones that are not coming through flow deleted are discarded by PRTG and never make their way into the graphs. So I want to do a quick experiment and craft my own net flows and send them across uh, one with each type of firewall event and see what actually gets recorded by PRTG and what doesn't. The problem is that they don't have a column or any way to review what that firewall event value was for the flows. They only give you these here, source IP, destination IP, you know, port, protocol, bytes, very limited. So I'm also gonna have to manipulate one of those values and make it somehow align with the firewall event. The simplest way I can think of is to have, uh, say we send a firewall event uh, one for flow created, We'll also set the, say, source IP to be 0.0.0.1. And then you know, for a flow delete, we'll set the source IP to be 0.0.0.2, something like that. So here's some actual NetFlow data that I've captured uh, with Wireshark on the PRTG probe. And I'm just going to select this NetFlow level and I'm gonna copy as a hex stream. Then I've got a Linux host here that I'm going to use to replay some of these flows. And we're going to write a loop to help do that. So to start off with, I'm going to paste in that blob of hex for all of the flows. Now, each of these uh, packets that comes through has multiple flows within it. And to keep things simple, I'm just going to isolate the first flow. I don't care about any of the other ones. So let me select the second flow here, and then we'll delete that and everything after that. And it'll leave just the headers and the first flow. So search for second flow, delete to the end of the file. There we are. All right, so now for our loop. One through five, since those are our different firewall events. Uh, we'll do a print. Go ahead and finish out my loop here. We'll do a new line. And then we'll go back and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put in our iteration as a variable here in just a sec. So let's uh, find that source IP first. You could do this with any of those columns that are uh, presented in PRTG, but I'm just picking this one. So 
source IP. And then we'll do variable I, which is the iteration. All right, and then the important thing is to change that um, firewall event. And that one is down here. It's O2, it's real short, so I'm gonna actually use this flow ID as kind of an anchor or a reference, since I know that'll be more unique. So, and I'm just using that in my search. I'm just gonna go to that. And then after that, there'll be an O2. Yep, there it is at the very end. And same thing here, we're gonna do variable. Okay, and let me put these into files. Like so. Looks great. Okay. The other thing we'll need is the templates for NetFlow. So I'm going to jump to this template and copy all of that. It's important that we copy it only from this layer of the capture. Uh, we don't want to replay any of the IP headers or Ethernet or anything like that. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. And to do the actual replay, we're going to use this nice shortcut feature of Bash. And these are in hex, so I need to convert them to play them back. Uh, let me play my template first. We're going to use XXD to do the conversion. The template. And Bash has got this cool uh, dev UDP. And then the IP address. I've got a variable here holding that placeholder right now. And then the port, 2055 for NetFlow. And down in this bottom uh, Tmux pane, I've got a, a TCP dump going. So we'll be able to see those each, each packet leave here, if it works. Yep, so template went out, length 740. And then let's send all of the different firewall event types. Firewall event. Good, should see five leave. Yep. Okay, and let's flip over to PRTG. Okay, it's starting to load in. Usually the table down below loads on the second time. Second refresh, I mean. can already see in this pie chart that 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.2 uh, is the only one showing up. Okay. And after some waiting for it to process, uh, it finally loaded in. And you can see here that uh, the source IP 0 .0 0.0.0.2 .0 is the only one that showed up in our list, uh, which confirms that only firewall event 
excuse me, only firewall event two is captured or recorded by PRTG and everything else is just discarded. So um, I, I see this as a bug or a flaw in PRTG. Um, there's no reason that you wouldn't want to record the flow updates, especially for your longer running sessions that are uh, you know, consuming more bandwidth. Uh, you certainly want to record those and know about those in your net flows. So there we have it.